we're going to talk about knowledge graphs. Knowledge graphs are a AI technology that is used pretty much anywhere online in any major platform or system or application that we're using on a daily basis. Anytime you ask Google or Bing or your favorite search engine a question, it will most likely use a knowledge graph alongside many other types of techniques to retrieve information and answer questions. So if, for instance, you are asking um, about Bush House, which is the building where we are now, any search engine will provide a list of documents, maybe some ads of some form, but uh, somewhere on that result page, it will give you some very specific information about Bush House. It will provide probably a picture of the entrance where, where you came in, and then it will say, well, um, this is an address of this thing, Bush House, that me as a computer without any sort of um, human understanding uh, can nevertheless relate to. So, so, so that string of characters, Bush House, uh, all of a sudden has an address and it has um, perhaps um, opening hours and it has particular departments at King's College that are located in this building, right? Now, if I go and query National Theatre, I will still get information about the address because it's still a building, but perhaps it will not take, tell me anything about any university departments because National Theatre is not a university or it's not a location for a university. Right? So how does Google know all those things about the world around us, about London? Well, because it uses the knowledge graph. And I say the because actually Google um, is the company that has coined this term. But actually the principles and the technologies have been around for, 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 for much, much um, longer, in fact, decades and decades um, where um, AI researchers were building so-called knowledge bases, which are very similar types of, of IT systems that are encoding knowledge, information, data. I don't think we need to go into a big discussion about what these three mean and how, how they are different from each other. They are. In this case, in the example I had, it's about knowledge about London. What connects all these different pieces of data together? So this is the knowledge graph. This is the knowledge graph. And the knowledge graph, um, as it is today, not just in the case of Google, but pretty much any large organization that, that provides this sort of um, internet information services has one. Um, they are huge databases with billions and billions of facts like this, Bush House is located in London and at, at, at this address, right? Um, this information is extracted from documents. Um, say on the King's website somewhere, there is information about Bush House and, and it's written probably in text and Google has the machinery to process all this text and recognize that this string Bush House is probably a building and, 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 and learn that information, that structured information and store that in the knowledge graph. Um, so the knowledge graph ultimately, um, you can you can imagine it as a um, as a database um, that stores facts um, about things in the world and relations between them. Um, and we in in um, AI and in knowledge graph engineering, we distinguish between the actual data, so Bush House, National Theatre, and then abstract data, which is theatres, buildings, universities. So any university, most universities in the world will have a set of common properties, right? They will teach students. Um, they will be located on a certain campus. Um, they will have a certain number of employees. King's College London has three or four actually different campuses. LSE, also a university, she has many types of properties, also teaches students, also has employees, but has different campuses, different address. So there is the data about LSE and King's College London, and there's all these joint properties that all types of things like LSE, like King's College have. And that helps in web search 
but in many other types of AI applications as well. So in question answering, um, in recommendations of movies, of products, and so on and so forth. Because it basically allows that recommender or search engine to provide very specific, very accurate, to the point answers, rather than relying on extracting those answers from natural text. And you see the difference actually in search when sometimes you type something and, and Google says, well, people also asked for this and this, right? And then you have that question and you have that little drop down list and a snippet answer. Now, some of those answers sometimes match what you're looking for, but sometimes they're um, actually only remotely or not all relevant. And that's the difference. A computer has struggles to process and extract very specific types of information from what we call unstructured data, which is text, images, videos. But it has no issue whatsoever, or much less <laughs> issue, to um, work with data that is already structured in a graph, for instance. My simplistic view of graph being a thing you plot on a piece of paper, you know, yes. to axes beyond paper, you could have many more axes. Is this what we're looking at here? Uh, so we're not talking about charts. Okay. Right, so we're not talking about um, visually displaying data in a two, three, or multi-dimensional visual space. We're talking about a graph in a mathematical sense. So a graph consists of nodes and edges. Um, we know graphs from computer networks. Right, so you have um, computers, which are the nodes, and then the communication links between them. We know graphs from um, geospatial information systems, maps, right? So you have points on a map, and then you have routes. You need all sorts of algorithms to compute edges, for instance, in the case of maps. If you want to go from A to B, you um, can do that by passing multiple intermediary nodes. So when you say an edge, I mean, we, we kind of had the example yeah. of a map and yeah. that being a root in the map. Yes. Well, what, how do you define an edge? It's any type of relation, right? So for Bush House, it could be has address. So let's just say that we represent the nodes in these ovals, and then we represent the edges as uh, lines between these nodes. So we're talking about Bush House and we're talking about King's College London, right? And then, so what's the relationship between Bush House and KCL? Campus of or something? Yeah, like campus of, or we could call it building of KCL. We can have another relationship that says Bush House has picture, and here's my picture of Bush House. Yeah, mm -hmm. And it could be an actual image. All these lines can have different meanings. So I can have the has picture edge from Bush House. From KCL, you could have something like uh, has logo. And it points to another image that is the logo. Uh, you could also have some sort of has picture with some picture of KCL, who knows? And there's an image file here. So you can have different types of edges. This type of has picture edge and this one here are the same. So if you want to have all pictures of things, you can query, just like you would query with SQL in a database. Um, you can have any type of edge you want. You label it, so you give it a name. Mine have arrows. That's mostly just for my understanding, because I want to say that the image is something that belongs to Bush House and not the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you have edges that could have arrows on both ends. Um, so if you think about Elena has sibling Alex, my brother, um, so the edge has sibling is what we call symmetrical. So if I'm his sister, then he's my brother. So the moment when I define the edge has sibling from the node Elena to the node Alex, the computer, or I can actually tell the computer, by the way, there is also the opposite edge. If I have an edge or a relationship like is located in, so Bush House is located in London, you see how the graph actually starts to take shape in London. And Elena works 
at Bush House. Mm -hmm. And London is located in England. You can tell the computer, well, is located in, is a type of edge that is what we call in maths transitive. So if I know that Bush House is located in London, and I know London is located in England, then I know that Bush House is located in England. So you don't actually have to look for that sort of question. If someone ever would ask, is Bush House located in England? You don't actually need to look for the data specifically. You can, what you call, infer it. Mm -hmm. So you can, um, from all this information that I have written down, you can now infer additional knowledge. This is a bit like an ontology then? In yes, sense. it is an ontology. Well, it is based on an ontology, to be more specific. The ontology will be something about cities and about buildings in cities and buildings belonging to institutions and people working in certain buildings. Is there an easy a sort of free way people could play with this or try this? Is there something um, out there people could download? Or? For developers, the Google Knowledge Graph API is something that, that people can look at. There's also various open source knowledge graphs available. Let's say Wikipedia has one. It's called Wikidata and it's what they use to manage all the structured information they have. So, you know, when you go on a Wikipedia article and on the right hand side, you see what they call an info box. Bush House, go on Wikipedia and then you'll see that comes from a knowledge graph that is publicly available and people can download it. It's quite big, um, but at the same time, you have lots of information that you can play with and, I don't know, train a neural network on and do all sorts of wonderful things. So yeah, it's available and, and, and there are smaller versions as well for, for people to, to, to play with. It's super hard to know. I mean, there are different things going on here. There's intelligence, which I think you've got to say maybe some computer systems are intelligent, at least at certain things. There's sentience and there's consciousness and they're slightly different than intelligence. Something here. So that big pointy spike in the middle, that's sunglasses. Sunglasses. And if we